Thank you very much. <laughs> I feel very honored to be here. Uh, since 18 months, I'm a big ERAS fan, and I uh, admire all the work you are doing. And I think it's fantastic to be here, because on the level of specifics and methods and consequences of the methods you discuss is admirable. And I, I think it's so fun to listen here. Uh, I'm coming from Jönköping, and Jönköping is a county uh, in the south of Sweden, and we are serving a population of 13 uh, municipalities and 330,000 people and we have three hospitals and 51 care centers. But we are also a member of a healthcare region, and that is three counties, and we serve about one million people. And my talk's gonna cover how we try to increase the patient safety and the efficiency in, in this region. Uh, maybe I should have started here. I think Sweden are most well known for the Nobel Prize, maybe some sports people, but also for Vasa. You know, Vasa sank 1628 in the harbor of Stockholm after just a short, short journey. And uh, it was the most beautiful ship in the world, but that didn't matter because the leadership didn't work. The hierarchy stopped. Uh, the people from talk with each other and the communication was so terrible that everybody on the ship knew that it should sink as soon as it started. And uh, I think that that is a very important story when we think about safety. Now um, Sweden has approved at least in other communication areas because I think we are one of the best countries in the world concerning traffic and we have decreased the amount of deaths and we have a zero vision in Sweden in traffic. And one of the main issues have been to block the, the streets so cars cannot move from one side to the other side and that has decreased the amount of deaths down to 300 a year. Now, I have seen before during these days that you have cited Don Berwick, and I'm not sure that he is the primary person to cite in this uh, quote, but I think it's a very important quote when we talk patient safety. Every system is perfectly designed to achieve the result it gets. That means that if we continue to do what we always done, we will always get the same results. So we need to improve, but improvement also needs safety thinking. Now, my uh, part of the world are not working up here in a quality of evidence description. And I have heard during these days that you are circling around these areas. But my, ex my knowledge comes from well-designed non-experimental uh, things based on clinical evidence, descriptive studies or reports of expert committees. And it can also be uh, based on, on uh, uh, very uh, knowledgeable experts. And uh, my work are mostly done in these areas where we have just enough data we try to change as soon as we have this data on board and we do many sequential tests and we are not using that much this part. And I understand that that can sometimes be a provocation when you want to be very specific, but I wanted to clarify this before we, I continue. Because I think that um, uh, ERAS is fantastic, and ERAS is the thing that can unlock the uh, system thinking in, in healthcare. And what I see in ERAS is that you have here a way to share in real time the data, and you can develop a new way of problem solving and I think that the workforce engagements are there directly because of this. And we 
see that the good leadership develops uh, eras and we can see that benchmarking and knowledge sharing becomes very crucial and I, I really like that. In my county we have had this approach uh, during the last four or five years where we in this 14 area Yes, this year it's 16. We have developed standardized work processes. We have uh, measures, both baseline and improvement measures. And we have uh, clinical groups, expert groups, and so on, that uh, try to ensure that our inhabitants, every time they visit us, should have best possible care in these 14 areas. And when you visit our system, you can see dashboards like this, just as you use in areas everywhere concerning the different areas I just now pointed out. Why is this so important? Well, we are very thrilled of the idea that every patient should get the care they need when they need it. Because the two biggest questions at least from my point of view, is that the patient has so much anxiety that we need to also take care of that. And of course, they want to stay in an autonomy situation so they can live the way they have lived before. Therefore, we try now to develop a new kind of patient involvement that we call patient partnership. And let me start with this positive provocation. This is from our self-dialysis unit. We have a house where the patients have designed the house themselves and they can come and do their own dialysis for, from five in the morning to midnight. This has made it possible that all 16 patients that now do dialysis have a work on the work market before they, none of them had it. This has made it possible that they can do four to five times a week instead of three times a week. This has made it possible that we, during the 14 months we have done it, we have no care infection at all at the unit. That's the only unit in our county that do not have any care infections. And we have seen that we have reduced the cost of managing the unit with 30%. So I think that in the patient partnership there are tremendous uh, opportunities. Another big positive provocation for us has been working with Michael Porter and his ideas that we should change the way we measure the results of our system's performance. We should talk about survival, degree of recovery, the time the recovery is taken back to normal activities, missed access to diagnostic care or, treat or treatment, durability of the recovery, or the long time effect of the therapy. That is a different way of looking at healthcare. We usually look at healthcare from the clinical indicators perspective. I think we should look at care from this perspective. Then patient safety becomes something different. It is not only to risk minimize, it becomes to search for the good examples where it works very good every time and try to learn from them. So the big challenge in safety is to take away variation, that it is best possible every time. And the idea that all the activities should increase the value and minimize the, va the uh, waste. Now, what are the biggest challenges when you look at it is like this? Well, our experience is that the false demands are very uh, problematic. That is the things that happens while we are in touch with the patients at the hospital or through medication and so on. Increased infection risk, uh, 
patients that get ulcers, etc. Those things are just false dem demands that we uh, that shouldn't be in our system. Now, M. René Amalberti has created this picture where he describes the risk, and he says that. A nuclear industry, railways in France, and civil aviation, but also anesthesiology has a high uh, uh, safety net and are nearly ultra safe. But he also describes that describes that most care are in this area where we do right 90 out of 100 times. And we need to change that, but the only way to change that is to develop people that become team players and accepting to become equivalent actors and accepting to endorse re residual risk and accepting to question the success and to change strategies. And I think this is a real challenge for us to develop the culture so we have people that are ready to doing this. And I think that ERAS can help us with this. So I really appreciate all the work you do. Why? Because ERAS gives us a, a process where we leave the person approach and go into the local organization. And we don't run for the mosquitoes. We try to take away the real swamp instead. And that is the big thing. Why? Well, in Aridia and uh, Annals uh, Surgery 2009, we can read about the uh, amount of complication increased after operation in colorectal cancer when some of the 15 most key points in best practice were not done. If all key points were done, 7% of the patients got complications. When four or more key points in best practice were missed, 42% of the patients got complications. This is why clinical programs guidelines are so crucial in our work. Now, do we have any risks? Well, this is a picture from one very simple medication and one very um, dangerous medication and there have been misses in Swedish care because of the looking of the uh, bottles. This is a daily report from my, to me from my uh, IT people around how we have problems with our patient record and IT system. And here you can see that we have uh, seven, uh, let me see here, nine different wrong referrals because of mistakes caused by the partnership between the computer and the doctor in the daily work. And those kind of risks shouldn't be there. It can be very dangerous for the patient. This is another problem we have. This is the prevalence question around heart failure. And these are our primary care uh, areas. And here you can see that in one primary care area, we have only found 0.7% uh, of the in inhabitants uh, with heart failure. And here in two areas, we have found them all, at least from what the science says. Now, how come we cannot find them in all the areas? That's a big safety problem. Another uh, area where we have seen that it is so important to work with the heart failure patients, and that is uh, connecting a nurse to the heart failure patient. And here you can see a control group that haven't had a nurse uh, contact, and the yellow is uh, no, it's the opposite. The yellow is the control group and the red ones are the group with nurse contact. And you can see that they have many more days event free. And this shows how important the partnership is to reduce the risk. Another very challenging problem we have is to see the colon cancer five year survival when we can see that there are in our region of three different uh, 
counties such a difference in the results concerning uh, the women results. And among the men, we can see that the survival rate are about the same. How can we have a system that delivers this kind of differences? It's not acceptable. This is from Stockholm area, and here we can see that one hospital are performing so much better than the other eight in, in colon cancer care. And how can we have it like that? Why cannot the other eight con do the same way and get the same results? Here is from hip replacement work and patient satisfaction. This is Oskarshamn, one of the hospitals in our region. And they have, during the three years when we have measured patient satisfaction, a much better result. How come we cannot change the culture so we get, get the same kind of level at the other hospitals. Here is from our own hip uh, replacement work in Jönköping. And here is an astonishing result that out of these patients that are dissatisfied, after one year, it's one man and ten women. Why are ten women more dissatisfied than the men after hip replacement, after one year. So, I think that safety gives us big improvement opportunities. If we start look, to look into the transition of the patients, the medication work, the infection problem, to work with a readmission question and reduce that, and to develop collaboration in the patient's process and not in the process of the entity where I work. And then always try to work upstream. How have we come to this problem? Well, my view is that most people in healthcare, they put all their knowledge into the diagnostic and treatment questions. But I think the results depends on how we work in the pre-diagnose and the monitoring parts also. And we have to do it much better work here and here and of course here to understand how we can improve this. A second thing that is very important, that is to learn from the positive deviances. In our county, we have learned from this small nursery home how we can reduce the falls to a minimum. And we are down to two or three falls in the county per month today. And that saves us more than 50 million a year. We learn from our catheter work. Uh, and here you can see how we uh, have reduced the care-related cystite during one, and it's measured through a prevalence study, during one day uh, every month. And here is the level of the country, and here is the level of our county. That is done by a system approach. And here is the same thing, amount of patients with catheters. Uh, here is the level in the country, and here is the level in, in our county. We also get, got very encouraged when we saw that we could, by system approaches in patient safety, reduce the patient injuries at one hospital with 50% in three years. And it has continued, it's under 10 today. Why has this been possible? Well, we learned a lot from these three persons, Eric Holnagel, David Woods, and Nancy Leverson, that told us that you should not look into the failures, you should look into those who 
do it right every time and try to learn from them and then do it your way but learn from the best examples all the time. Therefore, I'm so provoked when I still can have a doctor's delay in colon cancer care, in primary care, 2011 in my system like this. And for, when we measure time from diagnosis to operation per hospital in our re healthcare region, we can see that it takes between 20, 15 and 49 days between the diagnosis and the operation as an average. But there are a lot of patients that have much longer time. And if you should reduce anxiety and keep your autonomy, these are very crucial questions. So in our region, we said, let's challenge ourselves. Let's promise our inhabitants that we should transform cancer care to a completely new level. So we is, had promised our inhabitants that they should receive treatment within four weeks, that they sh should have best practice and clinical programs at place in all cancer processes, that they should feel very involved as partners every time, that the palliative care should be delivered no matter where you live, and the screening program should be set in place and the research should be patient-oriented. This has been a large provocation. We have a lot of professionals that think this is not necessary and this is not possible. But I think that this is what we have to do because that's the only way to show our inhabitants that we are there for them. Because the whole challenge is how we can use our clinical knowledge and service knowledge and improve that with the same amount of money. Every time we get more money, we reduce the value. So the patient safety work is all about taking away waste, best possible effectiveness, and understand that the change and learning is the earning and everything is done by the team and the improvement groups. First, we have to change our view of how we think about processes. We map our patients' processes and say that before the patient meets the provider or the caregiver, everything should be in place. The investigation, the information, the competence and the treatment plans. And we learned this from Motala, a primary care center in diabetes that are best in Sweden. They have standardized the work in diabetes to that level that they are world class for every patient in the geographic area. So how can we standardize the work so before the patient comes, everything are in place, both at, in our computers and for our caregivers, so the patient feel that we are the best possible prepared team. And we do this very mechanically. So we put up this patient's process and then we make them fill in different kind of programs that should be in place. Then we transform that into the IT system and the patient has full transparency to the information and what should happen uh, before they come. Of course, we need to find out if this works. I have now some uh, statistics from our analyze of how we are doing right now. And we, so this is a baseline and it's done by Professor Rune Sjödal and he has used global trigger tool and a, a new protocol that we call patient perspective protocol that tries to cover waiting times, amount of doctor's contacts and how the patient percept that the information works. Contacts with the care because of stomach pain six months before the diagnosis. 
here you can see that the average is about two contacts, but you can see that if you come acute, the red ones, uh, there is a difference between uh, two of the counties. We try to see if, the dif if there are differences concerning anemia, and there uh, you can see that the elective patients have anemia to 50 percent, but the acute patients do not have it. We try to look at the time from first visit to diagnose, and here you can see, uh, I think, a statistically proven difference between two of the counties that from the first visit to the diagnose, it takes longer time in one of the counties. And time from operation to PAD answer, you can see that we have 21 days, and that is absolutely too long. We can do it in 10 days, and we know that the system can deliver it in 10 days. So why don't we perform at that level? Here you can see time from surgery to oncological therapy, that takes, uh, in an average, 26 days. If we plan the process when we know the diagnosis, we don't have to have more than 10 days there either. Here you see amount of doctors from diagnosed to the final record <coughs> note. And there you can see that there are six doc different doctors meeting the patients. And I'm not sure that that is necessary. If we look into the question from the patient perspective about anxiety and autonomy, that has to be reduced, of course. This is if we inform both the patient and the relative about the problems the patient have. And here you can see that our counties are performing differently. And you can see that um, it is possible to do it just as good in both the acute and elective care if you have a system approach in your work. Have we reached any results that we can show? Well, the late last 18 months we have gone from not having a, a let me find a multi Disciplinary, uh, multidiscipline therapy conferences uh, from a ver very poor level to a level that we are a little proud of. But we should, of course, reach 100% in the pre operative uh, work, just as we have done in the post operative work. And the next phase is, of course, to uh, see how we can invite the patient in this work too. Do you have a name given person to contact about your cancer disease? 67% of our patients have that. That is not enough. It has to be 100%. Amount of CTC of total colon investigations at the radiology department. Here you can see a, a leap and an in, increase of the uh, access. And that is done by a change. We saw that in Kalmar, one of our counties, they had eight to nine radiologists that knew CT uh, colon. And at that time, we only had two, three in Jönköping. But through education, we got, all, we got nine radiologists that could do CT uh, colon, and that changed the time from referral to coloscopy to investigation dramatically. So you can see that the performance is on a completely new level. Amount of days from the radiology investigation to the visit where the therapy are decided. You can also see that we are now down to less than a week. We are down to nearly two or three days. Why is this so important? Well, patients should get the care when they need it. And we should reduce anxiety and increase autonomy. 
And the only way, as I see it, is to develop the patient partnership. And I think that safety and errors, from my perspective, are a way to unlock this system potential. And you are doing a fantastic work in this. So keep on, learn from the people, plan with the people, begin with what they have, build on what they know of the best leaders. When the task is accomplished, the people all remark, we have done it ourselves. Thank you very much.